Iglesias started back in 99, and since then we have grown uh, to 20 million uh, euros in turnover and uh, 60 employees. We have two data centers in Sweden, we have data centers in Finland, important data centers all over Europe, from London, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, Copenhagen, and Oslo. One of the cool things about this building, and this room in particular, is the way that we produce heat. What we're looking up in here is the water pipes that feed this coolant machine that I'm standing in front of. It uses the cold water that's transported through the pipes to produce this cold air that's feeding the servers. The servers will then use that cold air uh, to cool it down and it will produce warm air that's sucked into the same machine and transferred into warm water that's then pumped away and then transferred into the city heat grid. The room we're in now is uh, where all the heat pipes from the server rooms we visited earlier end up. The heat pipes run through these compressors behind me and the energy in the warm water is transferred to the pipes behind me here and fed into the city heat grid. And I checked the numbers just before we started in here and we've so far delivered 50,000 cubic meter of warm water to the city of Pokemon. Please welcome Supermicro Senior Principal Rich Lappenbush. <laughs> Welcome to uh, share with you a little bit about what we've been working on with Gleesis, who you just saw a video of. Uh, they've been really a leader in heat reuse, and while a lot of our industry right now is consumed with the conservation of power and, and the minimization of cooling and, and, and space, uh, heat can also be considered an asset that can be reused and is valuable to other people, but it depends on the proximity. I'm Rich Lappenbush with Supermicro, and we're going to talk a little bit about this. Uh, I encourage you to head downstairs and, and spend time with all the companies and partners that are here. Uh, they've done a tremendous job of driving the opportunity for heat reuse. I'm going to share just a little context for Supermicro, for those of you who don't know. Uh, we create uh, direct liquid cooling systems and solutions. Uh, we do that at scale. Today, that's uh, upwards of 2,000 DLC racks per month out to customers globally. Uh, and those uh, at a per rack level are at about 250 kilowatts uh, per rack. And they, those have been built up to 18 megawatt facilities. But really what I want to share is kind of the life cycle or the journey that I've had over the last four years working with OCP, because I know a lot of you are new to OCP and I wanted to share with you a little bit about what my journey was in, in the hopes that maybe you find that same journey easier. I started out as a volunteer listening to uh, a number of different working groups. And as you get into OCP, you realize quite quickly there are over 100 working groups and subgroups and interest groups. And uh, for me, it was uh, total cost of ownership and liquid cooling were the two topics that were most interesting to me and my customers and the, the things that were pressing on me three years ago. And I started out as a volunteer listening uh, to what they were thinking about and what they were doing. Uh, and as you volunteer, you start to wade into the water and you start to understand who's engaged. And it's incredible that uh, you think about OCP as this huge organization, but in reality, it's this federation of over 100 little working groups of three to six people. That's really what we are. We really are a pretty tight community when you think about it. And as you get into that working group, you, you understand what they're trying to accomplish for the next uh, for the next rev, uh, typically it's a white paper or it's a specification or it's something like that. And you start listening quite intently about what will work and what won't work. And then you quickly realize, hey, I have some assets here that are helpful. I can offer something up. Now, obviously everybody has their different mix of what they want to offer and what they want to keep for themselves and what they want to keep confidential. But the point is that all of us have something that we can offer up. And it doesn't matter how small, it, it helps move the ball forward. And once you start to share, then the collaboration really takes off. And with that collaboration comes a bunch of new opportunities and interests because it's interesting that customers see you collaborating and they get excited about what two, three, four of their vendors are doing together to solve problems before they even know their problems. And from that point forward, you start to manufacture both products and services that make sense for the customers. Those get vendorized, those get uh, serviced, out to the service channels, the reseller channels, and eventually after a few years, whenever it makes sense, they get recycled 
and pulled back in, uh, whether that's physically recycled or the ideas get recycled. And then the process starts all over again. So I encourage you to think about this process in your journey and see if it makes sense for you and uh, take a look at, at what's downstairs in the way of heat reuse. For us, the first big step was not heat reuse, but was something quite easy. It's the NIC card, right? Everybody thinks, oh, it's just a NIC card. Well, how difficult can it be? Well, actually, <laughs> it can be quite difficult. The drivers and the, and the support and the form factors and the heat. Uh, network interface cards uh, have been the bane of a server for a very long time. And so couldn't we make it easier? Couldn't we make a uniform uh, standard or platform where we can at least have multiple standards? And that's what we did in 2017 and 2018 as OCP. Now we at Supermicro took a pretty passive role in that, but the point was the customers were quite, quite clear. They wanted this level of collaboration and they wanted a unified solution to the NIC card. From there it snowballed and we saw specifications, we saw more and more employees get involved. Uh, I'm personally involved in immersion liquid cooling and TCO right now in OCP, but I have my colleagues who are also involved at network we're also involved in security. There's all sorts of uh, AI, uh, all these different work groups that George was just talking about. And those specifications lead up to white papers. Those white papers drive OCP-inspired products. We have uh, probably a dozen at this point of OCP-inspired products out there. Uh, you can see many of them on the floor downstairs. And this is the snowball effect for us, right? We started with some very, uh, very small steps, right? Just get a NIC card working the version three NIC. Then, hey, let's figure out an enterprise server spec. And then it was like, hey, let's figure out a motherboard. Can we just have one unified motherboard that we all agree on and a form factor? Uh, and then well, maybe a few flavors of that. And that's where uh, DCMHS really took off. And all the, all the different permutations on top of that board. And then in the last two years, it's just exploded. I mean, we have over a dozen active engagements and it's really meeting the needs of the customers. Again, like I said, it's not meeting current needs of the customer's needs. What it's saying is, hey, uh, customers, there are problems out there you haven't even hit yet, and we're working on those already. And we don't do that as OCP ourselves, right? There's, we have an, a tremendous opportunity in this audience uh, and, and globally to work together, but we also recognize that there are other areas that we're not experts in. We're not experts all of us in, in networking. And so for that, that's Ultra Ethernet and the consortium there. Uh, we're not experts in messaging and development, software development, although we have some great partners over at DMTF and we've been using Redfish for at least six years on server messaging and what we can do there to help people understand what's going on on their servers. Just uh, temperature, uh, cooling, a bunch of different telemetry metrics you can get off that. And then of course, there's a ton of policy happening for AI because it's so resource intensive. And for that, we're collaborating with the AI Infrastructure Coalition, the Liquid Cooling Coalition, as well as OpenBMC for the security on AI. All of this culminates for us. We take all of that, uh, what we've been able to do in OCP, we mix that together with our commercial uh, intent and our products and what we develop, and we build up reference designs which lead to uh, new products like cooling towers, which drive new products and solutions like liquid cooling manifolds, and the, the uh, innovation around cooling distribution units going from 80 to 100 to now 250 kilowatts each, network switches, and the AI fabric that lives on top of the network switches. All of that is critical, and you really can stack these up like building blocks. For everything else, because each of you have a different solution you're after, there's another great resource that we rely on and we point our customers to, which is the OCP marketplace. So if you have a vertical interest in uh, HIPAA compliant healthcare in, in the states or uh, military grade encryption or whatever you're looking for, you can find that stuff out in OCP marketplace. So where is this going? Today, we're at 250 kilowatts for the liquid cooled rack. We're at about 340 kilowatts for a liquid cool tank. That's right now. I have no idea where it's going to be at the end of the year, but it's going to be more. And then where is it going next year? The trajectory is, is quite steep, and with that trajectory comes a lot of challenges. Those are challenges typically you're not going to solve as an individual company, no matter how big you are. 
We need to work together to hit that. But here's the opportunity. With all that heat, if we can get that heat out of the data center and somewhere else nearby adjacent, we have a, a plethora of opportunities to work in aquaculture, agriculture, uh, district heating that you saw from Gleases, uh, sterilization, sanitation. I mean, the whole list is, is amazing how much we can do here if you can get the heat to somewhere nearby and reuse it. So I'd encourage all of you to think about heat as an asset, not just a problem. And I encourage all of you to ask these questions and, and mix it up downstairs uh, with everybody who's invested here, uh, showing up, bringing their products, bringing their services. It's amazing how much innovation has happened because OCP has just been present and has asked the tough questions. For me, this is the immersion team that I've been part of for upwards of three years now. And it's been an amazing group to, it's a peer review group, they push back, uh, I push on them, they push on me, and we're better together. We're better together, not because we figured out immersion or we figured out TCO, it's happening faster because everyone's actually talking and collaborating. And that's really the essence, the value of OCP for me. I hope you find the same value yourselves and have a great show. Thank you. <laughs>